So we're we're seven minutes in. So let's uh, yeah. just get started with who we are, cool. who's here, and other people can join as they're going. Uh, I'm Keith, and I'm uh, I am the staff at White Rose Canoe, uh, and uh, the owner Michael is uh, may may show up a little bit later on. I'm down at the shop now, as you can probably tell by the paddles hanging behind me and all that. And I want to welcome you and welcome you to canoeing with kids. Um, I'm not gonna, I'm gonna shut up, which is unusual for me. And I'm gonna just turn it right over to Carrie, uh, who is the uh, uh, ex executive director of uh, Northern Forest Canoe Trail and has just a bit more experience than I do canoeing with kids. So Carrie, over to you. All right. So I'm gonna just uh, start my, share my screen here and I have a little presentation because pictures tell the story better than anything. So tripping with kids and, you know, my personal experience is, is a lot to do with the Northern Forest Canoe Trail, but we've paddled quite a lot off the Northern Forest Canoe Trail. So it's certainly, um, that's my starting place. And I'll tell you a little bit more about that uh, shortly, uh, but also um, beyond for sure. It's definitely not just about the NFCT because there's so many places to go. I am, as Keith said, Carrie Thomas. I live with my family in Waitsfield, Vermont, and uh, my husband and two sons, they're now, my, my kids are now nine and 13, but I did start paddling with them in the sort of two to three and um, five to six range. I'm a little bit of an outdoor junkie. I don't really like to be active indoors. I definitely prefer the outdoors. I'm definitely a paddler and I have been since college. Um, I'm a mother and I'm lucky enough to be the executive director of the Northern Forest Canoe Trail. So I often describe this as car camping in the wilderness. That is paddling. Um, on canoe trips, you can be relatively comfortable with a lim limited amount of work and you still find yourself in really the most amazing places. And I'll say I grew up hiking and cross country skiing and backpacking in New Hampshire with my parents. And when I think about how hard they worked to keep us moving on the trail, I am so glad I discovered paddling. It is so much easier to keep your kids going when you can just paddle them along in a boat. But with a little strategic planning, paddling really can be doing in particular because the boat is so accommodating, can be a really great way to introduce kids to overnight adventures in the wild. So a little bit about me before I uh, came to, I, well, I came to canoe tripping most entirely from a whitewater kayaking background. I spent decades traveling the world, doing multi-day trips out of very small boats. Um, my oldest son's first paddling trips included waiting for his parents to take turns while he hung out Riverside and we paddled the run. Um, this is a picture of me and my girlfriends and I'm holding Finnegan when he was, you know, somewhere less than one year old. Uh, but, the, you know, so I did all of this fairly extreme paddling before I had kids and during the first few years of my kids' lives. And so when it came to the idea of packing my family in a canoe for an overnight, it, I just wasn't all that intimidated compared to the adventures that I had embarked on before kids. This sounded totally mellow, totally reasonable. And it wasn't really until I found the Northern Forest Canoe Trail, I moved back home from the West Coast. I had an ambition to return from California to the Northeast, up in New Hampshire, as I said, and we found a spot in, Maine, in uh, Vermont. My parents are still in Maine. It wasn't until I found the Northern Forest Canoe Trail that I figured out how to actually share my love for paddling and the incredible view from the water with my the so a little bit about the NFCT. It is a 740 mile long water trail. It starts in the Adirondacks and it ends in northern Maine. Um, most people, you know, some people do paddle it end to end, but the vast majority of the people look at this river 
system and they get really inspired and then they realize that they don't have six weeks to go on a paddling trip. So they pick it apart and they find the spots that are perfect for them at their particular skill level and their interest area and proximity to their house. And they choose the right weather and they choose the right water levels. And it really is just a remarkable a uh, system of waterways that allows people to paddle all over the Northeast. Um, I think that sometimes it's mistaken as just being a major through paddle, but like a hiking trail, like the AT, uh, you can do parts of it and never finish the whole thing and really get a lot out of it. But when I started as executive director in 2014, uh, I had been out West for 20 years and at this point, helping others access these waterways has helped me rediscover the landscapes of my youth while also being able to introduce my kids to the outdoor life that my parents showed me with maybe a little less um, nagging, I think. The canoe life is slightly less stressful than the hiking life, I think. Um, and now we've paddled across the Northeast and into Quebec with them, and we've learned a few things along the way. I said I wasn't intimidated by taking my kids on an overnight canoe trip, but I probably should have been. Uh, my life before had been as you know a hard charging adventure, and I didn't know it at the time, but I really needed to learn how to parent and to lead young adventurers while like really cultivating a love for the experience. Um, my hard charging self really needed to take a breather, essentially. Um, I learned my first lesson actually from a coworker, and that is plan for fun. Don't be overly ambitious. You know, distance doesn't matter. Don't venture into a place where you are going to be overextended because your job is to make sure that you have what you need to be comfortable and safe. And really, it's all about them. It is, this is, you, you absolutely have to be in a place where you're going to be comfortable. The first overnight that we did with our kids was actually a total mock overnight. And I, I think this is a great idea for somebody who is a little uh, uncomfortable with the idea. The boys were three and six at the time. And while we were serious whitewater kayakers and we had both canoed some as kids, um, my husband with his family and me at summer camp, um, we knew we needed to see what it would be like to cram all four of us into a little boat before we took on anything bigger. So we got a campsite at uh, Maljawak State Park in Milan, New Hampshire, right on the Androscoggin River. And we put it upstream in Errol and we padded our relatively unloaded boats um, down to camp and we spent the night and we then we paddled down to the Seven Islands Bridge the next day. It was really just a car camping. It was just car camping in the middle of two days of day trip, like two day trips. But the kids felt like it was a continuous trip since they we actually biked our shuttle and they didn't have to be part of it. Um, so it, it worked out really well for us as sort of a shakedown cruise. Our kids had messed around in various styles of kayaks, but this was actually their first time spending any amount of time in a canoe. And it turns out that canoeing is really much a much easier way to introduce your kids to paddling than a whitewater kayak, for sure. Um, naturally, being who we were, we started our adventure with the Errol Rapids, which is a short and fairly straightforward class two plus, fortunately right in town. These are not pictures of our family, but uh, you get the idea. Fortunately, we did not have our overnight stuff in the boat. While we didn't capsize, we definitely did swamp that boat to pretty much, you know, halfway. We had to pull out and bail at the bottom and dry the kids off and completely reorganize. So there was our first mistake. <laughs> the reality is that while we had all kinds of paddling skills, we didn't really know canoeing. And so this shakedown cruise was extremely helpful for our understanding of our capacity and our team and our gear. If we had been smart, we would have just put in below the rapid, which was actually putting in below the rapid was actually easier than putting in at the top. But instead, we got lucky. There was no damage. People were a little nervous, but 
you know, they actually had fun. And so the Androscoggin actually makes a really fun and easy overnight with kids. It's um, entirely roadside. So it's very safe feeling if something were to go wrong, you are right there by the road. However, you don't really notice the road from the water. It's a very quiet road. Um, and it's just, you know, the river is deep enough um, below the road that you really don't notice the cars. Uh, there are two broad class kind of one, two rapids downstream of where we put in like this one um, at the 13 mile woods. But the, most of the river actually looks a lot more like this. And we learned a few things on this trip to start with. One, white water can be scary. Um, and two, actually too much flat water without taking the time to stop and mess around can be hard for little kids. Uh, we were not yet at this point in the mindset that stopping is actually more important than paddling. So on we went. Later that first summer, we planned a trip on the West Branch Penobscot, which is north of Moosehead Lake in Maine. Um, as our first real overnight, it was we were super excited. We had planned for five days and we thought we know what we could do in that amount of time. We were wrong. So fortunately, my coworker talked me down and we heeded her advice. We cut it way back. The original plan is the red line where we were going to start below Roll Dam uh, at Sabumac Lake, paddle a bunch of rapids, do a side trip on Lobster Lake, finish the West Branch Penobscot, and then paddle all the way down to Sunkook Lake to a takeout by uh, Ripagina's Dam. And thank goodness that didn't happen. In the end, we put in at Lobster Stream, we paddled to the lake, and then we paddled back down the West Branch to finish at Chisung uh, Cook Village. Um, I have since happily paddled all the way from Lobster Lake to uh, Jiro Island, which is that little island across from the place where we curved down, um, or the red line curves down on the lake. Uh, with a group of adults, <laughs> but I would never want to do that kind of trip with small children in such a short period of time. Uh, certainly, if we had five days, we might have been able to do it, but forget what you can do. This is all about them. The best thing that actually happened uh, on this trip was the fact that three of the four of us uh, wound up getting sick the day before we were supposed to leave. And instead of making it a five day trip, we made it a four day trip. And we wound up spending two nights on the beach in Lobster Lake to give everybody time to recuperate. Maybe most people would have stayed home, but I had been planning this trip all summer and I was not gonna let it fall apart. And everybody was getting better. We drove and we just hung out on the beach. With the kids still only three and six, you know, the little people on this trip really only had certain capacities and interests. And we found out that we were really wise to operate based on their expectations rather than ours. It was a perfect spot to recharge. You know, they just swam, they messed around in the boats, they hunted for frogs and crawdads, they played in the sand. And it, honestly, it was just what the doctor ordered. And so as we went further downstream, we were also really glad to have decided not to push too hard. Uh, the kids wanted to stop all the time. They wanted to swim, they wanted to throw rocks in the river, they wanted to play in the sand, and they wanted to eat all the time, snacks upon snacks upon snacks. Um, and there were interesting places to support, explore, and so we had time to do it. That was really important. We camped early every day. Uh, we put on late every day. This particular spot was popular. It had a big eddy and a rock to jump off and they'd jump off the rock and then they would swirl back to the rock on the eddy. Um, you know, taking time to play the way kids want to play it was really the key for this trip. You'll notice that there's only one photo in this series, which is an image of us actually paddling. And that was really the nature of it with young kids at their age. But we arrived at the takeout and despite the fact that, you know, not in this picture, but the following day, the wind kicked up and it had started to rain 
the kids were actually almost in tears because the trip was over. They had so much fun. They wanted to go again. And to me, that was the only thing that mattered. That was success. I was incredibly proud of us for managing to tone it back and to pay attention to what they really wanted. And so we went forward. Over the next several trips, we learned more about gear and our capacity as a team. Uh, then the following year we did the East Branch Penobscot, uh, sticking in that same watershed. With the kids a little bit bigger at four and seven, we felt more confident in our canoeing. And you know, most importantly, we felt more confident in our canoeing skills. Um, the East Branch Penobscot was a little bit of definitely a step up um, from that last trip. Not only does it have some white water on it that you can run, but you don't have to. It also has a number of portages and we had never really portaged canoes before. So we thought, why not just jump in? Um, we actually brought two boats as well to keep them lightweight in order to be more maneuverable in the rapids. And uh, we learned that when you have an extremely light bow man, you paddle backwards. Uh, there was just no way to keep that boat going forward if I were in the traditional uh, stern seat and my son was in the traditional bow seat. So that was definitely one of those important lessons. Um, and since we like to paddle rivers and rapids wherever we can, we have always chosen to paddle Royal X canoes and we like a little bit of rocker to make them more maneuverable. And these are um, Old Town Appalachians, which are not made anymore, but there are a number of boats that have similar specs um, to those. They've been great. And you know, one of the important things is to make sure you choose a stable boat that's appropriate for your particular adventure. You definitely, performance is a, you know defined slightly differently when you're paddling with kids. You, you really don't want to tip over. <laughs> that would be subpar experience. With our kids, we also learned that a buy is totally essential. Our children uh, go sort of insane with uh, mosquitoes and black flies and bugs. Um, and this camp fly was really critical. The other thing that we invested in was some bug shirts, not just the head nets, but the comfortable bug shirts with the hoods. And so um, they've become an essential piece of kit for any adventure in the Northern Forest for our family. We also learned to how to pack for a portage. Um, and that pack portaging can be super fun. We saw all kinds of frogs. Literally, this trip had a different species of frog at every portage. It was super cool. Um, and the kids had their own packs so that they could help out and be part of the portage. Um, we have a system, you know, you can go as big as you want in a canoe because it can carry a lot of gear. But if you're going to be portaging, you also have to carry that gear. And in my experience, being out there with the kids, I would rather not do, you know, three carries for every portage. Um, so we got a system where we have our entire kitchen in one bag and the entire family sleeping gear in another bag. These are big bags, as you can see. Uh, and then everybody has a small day pack with the things that they need in the boat. So uh, I was initially worried about portaging with kids, but in the end, uh, it's just another part of the adventure. They're psyched to be out of the boat as much as they're psyched to be in the boat. Uh, and they love to explore and they love to take advantage of this time. And, you know, chosen correctly with the right skill set, whitewater can actually be fun. It's not always scary. You don't always swamp. Um, you can navigate effectively and have a super good time. And they feel so accomplished when it's all over. Uh, was a, a super fun river. But we also confirmed that camp time is really still the best. We still went, you know, made camp early and broke camp late. We did bring fishing gear and we usually do, uh, but we don't pack any other toys with us or any other things to kind of keep them entertained. 
Our boys make their own games and they create their own toys with whatever they find. Uh, it's a pretty remarkable place for imagination. So northward, we ventured uh, north of the border for a few years after the, um, the East Branch Penobscot. We did a, a super shortened low water trip on the Bonaventure in the Gaspé Peninsula. Uh, and we did two pretty epic adventures on the Mississippi Nordwest and the Mississippi Nordest. Um, I think the Nordwest was one of the most educational trips we did. Um, it's stunningly beautiful with these wild white sand beaches, but we also learned some significant lessons as we got a little closer to the Arctic Circle. Um, we don't have to really deal with things that are like this so much down south where we are, thinking of where we are as south compared to where we were, but it is still important to think about the, um, the kinds of things that we sorted out during this trip. Um, the beaches just, well, let's just say it made it wicked fun for the kids and camp still is the best. At this age, they were on this river, I think they were eight and 11. So just, you know, still getting older, but they still just have so much fun in camp and so much adventure and so much, um, so many different ways of, of looking at being out there. Oh, yeah. So yeah, all they, they really did want to hang out and play. And the nice thing is that we learned that lesson early and we planned in time to enjoy it. But what we did learn from this particular trip was we had a, a bout with some pretty nasty weather. It wasn't long, um, but we did learn the limits of regular kids' rain gear. And the next year we went up to this same uh, general watershed and anticipating cold weather, we did um, get them dry suits. It's not really ever necessary in August, in even in Maine, but August in, um, in Northern Quebec, it can very much be necessary. So kind of knowing where you're going and what the potential of the weather is, is really important. It's really hard to keep young kids moving to keep warm, you and I, and I mean, you know that when you get into cold weather, the best way to keep yourself warm is to keep yourself moving. Um, and, and yet I couldn't convince my younger son uh, to keep paddling on this. And this was a, and, and then despite the fact that we stopped for lunch and made hot soup and we found out that those insulated water bottles are not just for keeping water cold, they're actually for keeping hot chocolate hot. Uh, we pumped them full of hot chocolate all day, trying to keep them warm. And it was a bad day. It ended with uh, some mild hypothermia. And um, you know, despite the hot lunch and the hot drinks and the desperate pleas to have them keep moving, um, it was raining and it was in the 50s. And the wind kicked up just before we were about to make camp. Um, our outdoor leadership skills came in handy, but they were also really tested. Uh, we wrapped both the kids uh, together in a space blanket and just said, snuggle, snuggle as close as you can, keep warm because our job at that point was to make camp as quickly as we could in order to uh, get them warm and dry. Um, it was fine in the end, but it was certainly on the brink of scary. And I think that, um, making sure that you pay attention to weather, making sure that you think about the, the layers and think about how you're gonna keep people warm is if something does come up is, uh, is an important thing to think about. However, even in this miserable weather, the kids were having fun up until the point when they got cold, uh, that this was, of that really miserable wet day and they had they named this log and adopted it as a pet and insisted that we paddle it down the river with us so they're out there having fun even when it looks absolutely terrible and so we almost almost forgot all the misery of the rain uh that we had the following the previous day because the next day we woke up with a long lake crossing in front of us and a major tailwind. 
uh, we managed to cr cross a 20 kilometer lake in two and a half hours, which was absolutely outrageous. But the coolest part was the kids there in the front of our little tandem sailboat, they made up a crazy game where one of them was junk food and one of them was nutritious food. And they were basically hurling their respective weapons of junk food and vegetables at each other the entire way down the river. They just couldn't stop. They, they had so much fun. It was a great trip. So this river did have some white water on it and on in, in the final two days. And we had experience at this point and the kids had had a fair bit of exposure. So we let them make certain decisions uh, about what they were comfortable with within reason. So we always choose rivers where any challenging rapids are walkable. Um, we definitely don't want to get into a place out here in the middle of nowhere where we have a rapid that we absolutely have to run. The kids are scared. Uh, and, and it's dangerous. We always want to have that choice to walk around. Um, but if we let the kids choose to run it or not, then we know that they're going to have a lot more fun. We're going to be happier uh, knowing that they're going to feel safe. And we also are essentially prepared to run any solo if they decide that they don't want to run it with us. And ultimately, even with you know, my older son is now 13. He's starting to be able to pull his weight in the bow and has been for a couple of years. But, you know, early days, that person in the bow is really not going to be doing a whole lot if you're uh, a solo adult with a kid. So you really have to be prepared to paddle that boat solo. And it's actually paddling that boat solo on flat water too. This was a day towards the bottom and it's not particularly flat in this photo, but there was a fair amount of, of flat water this day. And, and my older son Finnegan, he was just tired of paddling, but he had a lot to say. And he entertained me with his thoughts and his stories all the way to camp. Uh, and when I needed his help, I would ask, and I would even usually get a few strokes out of him, but really, um, being in the boat with him is just really cool quality time. We have a lot of fun together. Uh, and, and it's, it's a time when you disconnect from all of the, the chaos and the hecticness of being at home. And you're all just kind of pulling forward towards the same goal of getting down the river and enjoying the scenery and enjoying camp and, um, and, and learning something about yourselves and each other along the way. So there is a, there are so many trips out there. We've, we've only barely scratched the surface with our family and, um, even the Northern Forest Canoe Trail, we haven't done all of these trips that I've listed out here, but um, varying lengths, varying distances from where you guys are. And there are so many other possibilities out there. But um, if you're interested in information about trips on the Northern Forest Canoe Trail in the Adirondacks in Northern Vermont, New Hampshire, or Maine, and actually I, I know a fair amount about some of the rivers to the south um, of the Canoe Trail as well. And I would be more than happy to um, talk to any of you about where you wanna go and how you wanna do it. And the, the resources that we have as an organization to share with you can be found at Northern Forest Canoe Trail. I can't believe I wrote that. It says northernforestcanoetrail.com. It should be northernforestcanoetrail.org. Um, I apologize for that. Um, we have a, an extensive trip planner tool, which allows you to pick your section of water where the put-ins are and the takeouts are and the campsites are. It's not intended where there are rapids, where there are portages. Um, it's not intended as a navigational tool in large part because uh, the majority of the trail doesn't have an internet connection of any sort. So this is definitely an internet planning tool. Uh, but the website also has a slew of suggested trips from, you know, one to five days, uh, all listed on our website. And then it gives you descriptions and a place to purchase maps and guidebooks 
if, uh, if that's something that you're interested in doing. And my contact information is email is the easiest way to get in touch with me. And that's Carrie at northernforestcanoetrail.org. Um, and the final thing for any trip is a treat from what I can tell, whether it's ice cream or a giant crepe, chocolate crepe with bananas and fruit. Uh, this is what we had after our, our trip on the Mississippi Nordwest. Um, but the, the take homes are really, you know, plan your route for fun. Don't try to do something that is going to be a slog or going to be a struggle or not fun for you or out of your comfort zone. Uh, make time to play. Don't try to do long days. Make camp early, break camp late, uh, and keep the kids involved with making camp and breaking camp. We find, you know, things like sausages for meals that you can put on a stick and cook over a fire, something that they can do to be part of um, making camping happen and, you know, the, the survival of it. You know, you can make food over a fire. Um, bring a ton of snacks. They're just always hungry. Uh, and know your gear. Know what you think you're going to need to keep warm, what you're going to need to keep dry. That's keeping your equipment dry as well as your um, your clothing dry if you need to. When the weather kicks up, plan for weather. It, it can happen anywhere in the Northeast, and uh, you definitely need to be able to stay uh, as dry as possible in order to keep warm and to keep it fun. And then celebrate when you're done, for sure. But anyway, that is the, the what I have to share with you. And I'd love to open it up to questions at this point. Um, I'm going to stop sharing my screen. And Got a few more people join, which is great. Oh, oh. Folks, if you want to unmute yourselves and have any questions for Carrie, then... Uh, I feel like I uh, I covered a lot of stuff, but not half enough. I mean, it's it's an endless endless process of figuring it all out. But I do think that the shakedown cruise we did early on was pretty smart. As, even as experienced paddlers, uh, it was really helpful to know what it was going to be like with the kids in the boat. Yeah. Um, how long? How many days were you there? Well, this particular, all of these pictures were uh, from four or five different trips, at least. The longest trip we've taken has been six days. It's Do you pretty take fun. Out day tripping, Carrie? Say that. Do you go out day tripping as well with the kids? Yes. Yep. We love day tripping. <sighs> We do two hour trips, we do one hour trips, we do all day trips. I love to find day trips that have a bicycle shuttle because one of the things about canoeing is you only use your arms. And when you get out, the kids are still wanna run around and do something crazy. So it's fun to park your bikes at the bottom and, and ride back up a rail trail or something. There's so many rail trails around and they often run along rivers and it's pretty fun to do a, a paddle down and a pedal back up. For the, uh, sorry, I joined late. So I am so sorry if you already answered this. For the, um, for the trips that are overnight that have campgrounds that are first come first serve, do you have a problem with getting a site? That definitely depends on where you are. And the Northern Forest Canoe Trail in particular has, a, you know, most parts of the trail, you're not gonna really struggle on that front. There are some parts of the Adirondacks that occasionally you'll run into problems. Um, but in our particular route and in the places that we've been, I mean, in our, the Canadian rivers that we did in, um, especially the super far north ones, the Mississippis, uh, we, didn't, we didn't see anybody else out there the whole time. So that was not a problem, but definitely in, uh, in places that are more populated, 
on the Northern Forest Canoe Trail, you you really sometimes you have to go a little further, but the the reality is that there are enough campsites for the number of people that are out there. Okay. And if you go with, like we were thinking of going with other families, so maybe like 12 people. Mm -hmm. What do you think of the campsites? I think I looked at the trail that you, that you did on, I can't remember, but I think it was a popular trail. So I'm just worried about having that. Yeah. Yeah, The West Branch Penobscot was one of those first trips that we did. And that is a place where there are often a lot of other people, but there are also a lot of campsites and a a number of them are bigger. Um, 12 is definitely a big group. I know in the Adirondacks that you're not allowed to have groups bigger than 10, for example. So um, that definitely is a one, an issue that part of, of the area, but no, the, in Maine, you don't, struggle you don't have any limits of the number of people there are on our website on our trip planner tool um, there is information about the number of tents or or, you know the number of yeah the number of tents that are um, not every single site has this information but the bigger sites will tell you when there are um, more campsites available and do you know what time you should get into the campsite? I agree that with kids, it should be early, but what, like, how early, like two? Um, you know, every day, I mean, if you don't get on the river till 10 <laughs> or 11 or noon, um, I don't think there's a specific time that I would recommend, but, and, you know, the reality is that if you get on the river and you stop and you have lunch and you stop for a swim and you stop for a snack and you stop to explore something that looks cool. It's not really about the time you get off. It's sort of more about the time actually in the boat. Um, So it's not so much, you know, start at X hour and finish at X hour. It's more like you probably can't get, you know, three or four hours in the boat is, probably a lot. Three or four hours on the river, maybe not. Because if you stop and mess around for a while, then, it, and that's where the the spending a little bit time of time on day trips ahead of time helps because you will get a sense of where your kid's breaking point is. And, and you know, I have boys, some people have girls, and I hate to say this, but they tend to be able to sit still longer. I, it's not universally true, but, and, and that's not a gender thing necessarily, but it is a kid by kid thing. Some kids can, I have two ADHD boys. So sitting still for them doesn't really work very well. Um, so I think knowing your kids is, is really important and knowing how long they can sit still and whether they like you know, whether paddling, the act of paddling is entertaining for them, or if they are all like, I have one kid, all he wants to do is jump out of the boat. And and he will at any possible moment. <laughs> so, um, you know, figuring out who your kids are and how they're going to enjoy themselves is pretty important. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Hi, Carrie. Um, thank you for sharing the the pictures and your stories were lovely. Um, I also joined late, so not sure if you talked about age and the best age to get started or when you got started with your boys. We started at um, three and six. There was, um, you know, the only real reason not to do it sooner is you, I wouldn't really want to take diapers on a river trip myself on a canoeing trip. I've been on, um, I've been on rafting trips with friends whose kids were in diapers, but I just think that would be terrible. Um, So, and then a certain amount of, um, you know, I think of this as something I'd say about a dog, but a certain amount of recall, like if you're, if you can talk to them about where you are and what you're, you're taking on and expect them to kind of 
stop if something's dangerous. You know, if they're running and they're about to fall off a cliff, you don't want that to happen. Um, again, you know, three was perfectly fine for us in the trip that we chose. If you were to do a, a you know, a three day trip on the Connecticut River with a whole bunch of big beaches um, and really, you know, just kind of meandering currents and no rapids and not a lot of stress, that's probably, it doesn't really matter how old they are. There's not a whole lot that's gonna be dangerous in there other than of course, I didn't even say this, but it goes without saying in my book, your kids all need PFDs all the time. Um, no matter how, how old they are, the, just having a PFD on is smart. Um, things can happen, they can be great swimmers. And then all of a sudden, you know, something happens and you, they're not near you and you can't help them. And having a PFD is, is just the, the safest and best, it's a best practice essentially. Um, so I, I, I hesitate to make a recommendation for other people's kids, um, but given our skill set and our knowledge of our kids, three was great for our youngest and our oldest was six at the time. I, I, I know of people who have taken pretty much newborns out. Uh, Bear Paulson who works at uh, as general manager out at uh, North Winds Canoe uh, did that. Uh, and I know like myself, I wouldn't take my 42 year old out. So, you know, it's, uh, it really depends on the kid. Thank you for sharing that. Have you ever seen Bigfoot? Ooh, no, but I have seen a moose. Ooh. They don't have big feet, but they have really big antlers. Whoa. What was the other question? One more question. Um, how old are you, your kids now? They are nine and 13. Yeah. How old are you? Seven. <laughs> Ooh, awesome. Seven is fun. Uh, quick question from my end. So, uh, so in general, I've done the canoeing out, portaging out by the boundary waters out of Minnesota and Quetico, et cetera. Uh, just around these, these parts around here, I really haven't done any canoeing whatsoever. But uh, you said you had some recommendations a little further south because we're down near Boston, actually. And head up there to, you know, northern Vermont or New Hampshire for like a couple of days, be like a multi-day like adventure for a lot of other things. You, yeah. And I have your email. So we could ask and maybe for some further south rivers or whatnot, just to kind of get our feet wet for those day trips that you would recommend it. And then eventually. Yeah. Yeah. Well, one of the things that we one of the things that we do as an organization we, is we try to connect with other adjacent waterways and yeah. there happens to be the Connecticut uh, River Paddlers Trail continues south. Um, our trail is runs along the Connecticut for just, I don't know, maybe 30 miles or so. But um, of course the Connecticut goes all the way to the sea. And there is uh, a website that tells you all about the Connecticut River Paddlers Trail and um, has maps and information about where the campsites are and where the put-ins and takeouts and challenges are. So uh, that would be a reference for sure that I would recommend. And the other thing is the, um, the River Management Society has a website that has every water trail in the country. And, you know, they're building this database uh, over time, but I know they have more uh, more information about paddling in um, in the Massachusetts area and you know Connecticut and Southern Maine as well. So that's okay. another possible resource. Yeah. So Nestor, you can uh, give us a call up here at the shop. We're in Newberry, uh, but Charles River Watershed Association. The Charles has got a lot of good good places, especially. Uh, moving out from Boston as well as in Boston. Uh, there's a Mystic River organization as well, uh, depending on where you are, coming up kind of towards North Shore stuff. Uh, the Ipswich is a really nice uh, small river 
um, that the Ipswich River watershed maintains uh, trails on in terms of put-ins and put-outs and take-outs and those kinds of things. So there's a lot of good water uh, around. Um, you know, so you can give us a shop, shout or just check out the watershed associations. Most of them you know, are, are excited to support paddlers. Right, cool. Keith, do you know yeah. if there are um, kind of places that have good camping where you could you know, low, closer into the Boston area. I mean, that's the thing I would worry about is if you're trying to do an overnight. Yeah, these are mostly, um, like you said, the Connecticut, there there are, I don't know about them particularly, but we can certainly find out uh, and, and share. And we've got people we can point you to. Um, there's a, a Facebook group um, as well for uh, Massachusetts, it's a Massachusetts kayaking and canoeing group uh, that's group, and I can send you a link to that, or again, you can call the shop and we can point you to that. Uh, right. That does that's a lot great. of good good things. So yeah, that's give us a call. Yeah. We'll, we'll be here. Uh, we're open. We have somebody for sure in the shop uh, Fridays, Saturdays, Sundays, and Mondays, different hours, and those kind of things. And that's all on our on our website. Awesome. I appreciate that. It just, I know I've been looking for like, since I moved up around these parts, it's, it seems trying to find these trails and like put into this needle in a haystack through the yeah. planet. And that seems like it's really tough to find. And cool. also, I mean, like the boundary waters, you kind of have to work to get there to a lot of these places. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. No, well, yeah. The boundary waters is, that's something special up there. That's for sure. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you. Right. I've got to sign off. So I got to put the phone to bed. Thank you guys for your input. I've got your contact. Good night. I'll look forward to your links. Thank you again very much. All right. Take care. Take care. Bye now. Uh, Carrie, could you uh, speak on the uh, Moose River bow trip a little bit? Yeah. Yep. I, uh, my wife and I, we, we're planning to head up there this summer uh, with our two little kids. You see them running around in the background a little bit there. You know, we're seasoned whitewater veterans and canoeists and all that, but uh, she was a little bit nervous because she hasn't been through that area before. I went up and paddled around on the lake a bit, got a little yeah. feel for the land, but uh, I know she's going to pop out here in a minute and wanted to hear a little bit about that, if you could, please. Yeah, absolutely. So the Moose River Bow is one of the you know most heavily paddled. It, it's a very established trip, and um, there, there are portages. There is whitewater. You like the white water. Um, so one of the things that we did on a lot of our rivers, but specifically on the um, the East Branch Penobscot is, you know, I would portage with the kids and my husband would paddle the boats through not all of the rapids, but a number of them. And and one of the, the strategies he would paddle he would paddle the canoes as close to the rapid as he was comfortable solo and empty and i would you know take the kids out at the upper end of the portage and make sure that they weren't getting because those are you know class five waterfalls in there um, we didn't want the kids to get dragged into that kind of chaos um, but my husband would you know paddle the boat solo as close as he could and then he put it in as close as like high up as he could so he didn't have to he had a lot of fun but also you know reduces the portaging and um that was a, the first river we did with um with two boats and then there was one longer rapid on that run that we portaged the gear and then we ran both boats through with all four of us in it so that um, we could all have the fun but we didn't leave the kids on the side of the river. I don't think that the rapids on the bow trip are appropriate for kids. I haven't done it myself. I've seen a lot of pictures and I've talked to a lot of people about it, but I really think that it's, um, it's a very established trip. It is something, you know, a lot of like camp groups go through there and they have kids paddling their own boats. Um, so my sense is that, you know, if you can have a couple of 10 year olds paddling through there that you guys can probably do it just fine. Great, thank you, appreciate yeah, it. Yeah, do you have any, I mean, I don't, I, as I said, I haven't paddled it myself. I do know a number of people who have and I could connect you with somebody who could tell you all about it. But 
Um, uh, it's everybody. Who, yeah, yeah. Yep. Everybody who goes through there loves it. So. And we've done well. The other good thing is that NFCT repositioned uh, a very large number of privies last summer, so they'll be fresh for you. <laughs> Fantastic. Yeah, we had a crew in there a few years ago that overhauled all the campsites um, during the time during a, a two su two summers in a row. We had a Bolu crew. Um, but there are still like three, four years later, there were still three privies that needed to be moved already. So <laughs> appreciate it. Yes. <laughs> I'm sure we'll take advantage of those this year for sure. Absolutely. I like that's great. <laughs> and let me know how it goes. I would love to hear uh hear about it. Oh, sure, sure. Yeah, I get I get your contact there. And uh like I said, I'll shoot you an email. Maybe if you got somebody that has made a trip through there. Yeah. And that's you know there's plenty of information totally. to the site and pull down most of it and uh yeah i think some of my concerns were how many days because you mentioned that making sure it's for the kids and not for you as a rush to go against the wind way you know that takes forever to get across the beginning yeah and that's just weather dependent right you right. never know <laughs> um, I would say, I mean, from what I've heard, it's it's a three to five day trip, depending on how fast you want to go. Um, I would, I mean, if you were able to plan for five, they just, they have so much fun out there. But if you can't plan for five, um, I'll hook you up with somebody who has actually done it and they can give you more um, direct beta on that. That would be great. And thank you for sharing the info on the mock trip because it has been rolling through my mind a lot this of uh, this summer thing to just go to a local lake and find some place to set up a tent and just yeah like, hey, we're playing and then we yeah. go home. So yeah. We've no, I, it makes a lot of sense. It makes a ton of sense. We've yeah, camped on the side of the river on the Kennebec a few times with the kids oh, and it's me. nice for a very long I'm night because feel. we don't sleep. But um, but it is fun. And so remembering that it's fun is good. So totally. How old are these guys? Just turned five and almost four. Nice. Yeah. Oh yeah. Good um, time. The uh, with the kids, the, the one thing you don't want to get is destination disease. You know, when you're you feel pressed to get to the end. I can imagine that would be really bad thing. So I, I've made the the fundamental error in uh, sharing my love of of rivers with my kids, right? Like I can't get them to paddle lakes now at all because they just want rapids and <laughs> they don't want to have to work for it. Fortunately, my husband and I kind of agree, so it's useful. But um, I also I don't mind paddling flat water. I just like to do it at race pace, so I don't do that with my kids. <laughs> I hear that. Get across that flat water and point it downhill. That's right. <laughs> so I'm the flat water guy in the group, I guess. It's all right. It's not a bad thing. There's lots of you out there. <laughs> if, if you are smiling, it's never bad. That's the thing. Exactly. Whatever you're doing, as long as you're smiling. All right. Anybody have anything else? Well, I appreciate it. No, I appreciate you all showing up and hopefully it was useful for you. Uh, if we can do anything for you uh, from the shop, let us know. We more than happy to talk as well as uh, if you've gotten gear or anything you need. And um, we'll be doing more of these uh, as we go through the year. And uh, hopefully we'll get some uh, some more folks. If you if there's a topic you're interested in, let us know because uh, we sure like to do that. Okay. All right. Have a good rest of your evening. Thanks for your time you. and let me know if you have more questions. Cheers. I will be sending out the Thank yeah, you. I'll send the recording out. I'll send you a link to the recording as well. Great. Okay. Cool. All right. Take care, all. Thank you. Good night.